everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jackie Thompson and I am now a graduate from Sacramento State University. <laughs> For today's video, we're going to be talking about racism. And the four topics I'm going to be talking about today are how to identify racism, the second is statistics on minorities in the workforce, the third is going to be my personal experience with racism, and then the fourth thing is going to be how to deal with racism and the different ways we can combat racism. And if you guys have any specific content that you would like to see, or different videos or whatever, go ahead and let me know in the comments. So let's get to it! Before we start, I want to say I have articles listed in the description and as always, I highly recommend you going and checking them out. They're super useful and especially if you want to just know more about racism in general, then these articles are really beneficial to read and I highly recommend it. So number one, identifying racism. Racism can come in many different forms and the most common forms that it comes in is unconscious bias and prejudice. Prejudice is a preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. An unconscious bias is learned stereotypes that are automatic and unintentional and they're able to influence your behavior. But besides those two forms, there are many other different forms that racism comes in and some examples are even through jokes. Comments that offend other people, even if it's unintentional, you can still be racist even if that's not your intention. And this can also turn into verbal abuse by name calling and it can even go to another extreme of physical abuse. There's also institutional and structural racism. And institutional and structural racism is mainly through policies, conditions, or practices that disadvantage certain groups or through inequalities and in resources of power and opportunities across racial and ethnic groups. One example of structural racism is within the criminal justice system with the variance in rates at which ethnic or racial minorities are arrested, convicted, and incarcerated for criminal offenses. Another example of institutional and structural racism is in the workplace. The amount of minorities that get jobs and get jobs that allow them to be in a powerful position, they most likely don't get those jobs and the statistics show that white people get those jobs over minorities. Now this leads me to my second point, which is statistics of minority representation in the workforce. This is overall in the workforce, so I'm not dividing it between men and women. And also, if you want to go check out my other video that talks about minority representation in STEM fields specifically, then go ahead and click the link right here and it will take you to that video. 67% are white people, 16% are Hispanic or Latinx, 12% are African American, and 5% are Asian. And now the amount that hold in a higher up position, like being a CEO, I'm gonna give, go ahead and break that down for you right now. And this is just a sample size, so it's not representative of the entire workforce, but it's just a sample size of 500. And you can go ahead and look at that article in the description. So 95.8% are white, 1.8% are Asian, 1.2% are Hispanic or Latinx, and 0.8% are African American. So you can see the huge discrepancies there are within these numbers and within the statistics. So now this leads me to my third point today, which is my personal experience with racism. The first time I ever experienced racism was when I was in first grade. To give you a little bit of background, I grew up in a Catholic private school and it was grades kindergarten through eighth grade. And the majority of the people who went there were white people. So in first grade, I remember this clear as day like it was yesterday, but I remember a little girl coming up to me, well, we were the same age, we were in first grade, so we were like seven years old. She came up to me and she was like, you realize you're the only brown girl in this school? So she wasn't wrong, I was one of the few people because the majority were white people and then there was only like a handful of Hispanics who actually attended the school. But for her to come and say that to me it was just, I was so thrown back and hurt by it. I was a little girl, I didn't even know what to think about it, and and I told the teacher on her. <laughs> so that was just one experience, and throughout my time at that Catholic school, ever since like fifth grade, I think fifth grade was my last year there, ever since fifth grade I felt discriminated against and I felt isolated and I definitely did not fit in I didn't feel like I fit in and it was really hard for me to make friends at that school and I, and I never and I never did it, it was really hard for me and I never did I didn't feel comfortable until I transferred out of that school and I went to a public school 
for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And that is when I really blossomed into who I was and I was able to find my place. And of course it helped that public schools are more diverse, especially than a Catholic private school. So, and I would say I didn't really, I didn't experience a lot of racism once I transferred out and throughout high school. I didn't really experience a lot of racism. But then when I got into my community college, College of the Sequoias, I did ex start to experience racism more frequently when I got there. One example of this is I remember I was walking to class and there was this guy who approached me and asked me if he could ask me a question. And I was like, yes, of course. And then he asked me, he was like, do you speak English? And I was like, yeah, yes, I speak English. I honestly don't even remember the exact question, but what I do remember is that he was pointing at his phone and then he was trying to talk to me in Spanish, even though he didn't know Spanish. And he was just being really, really rude about it. And I was like, sir, I speak English, like you can talk to me in English. And so that was a really extreme case of racism. Like that was just really, really weird and an awkward situation for me. <laughs> and then when I transferred to Sacramento State, I continued to experience racism at that school as well. And in my research lab, there was one of my lab mates that I worked with. I remember once it was after a vacation. We were in the lab working and whatnot and um, chit-chatting. He was asking me like, oh, how was my vacation? I was like, oh, it was good. And he asked me what I did. And I told him how I went to my hometown to visit my family. And I know a lot of you viewers know that I'm from Tulare because a lot of you know me. But, you know, for him being in Sacramento, he, he didn't know me. He was like, oh, so how was Mexico? How is it over there? And honestly, when he told me that, I was thrown back a little bit. I almost, I even, I did. I laughed a little bit too because I was like, <laughs> I couldn't believe what was coming out of his mouth. Like, that was just so racist and rude. What you should have asked, what he should have asked and said was like, Oh, where are you from? Where is your hometown? Versus just assuming I was from Mexico. And so that's when I told him, I was like, <laughs> no, my hometown is not Mexico. I'm from Tulare, which is in California, just three and a half hours away, and that's where I was. So I just set him straight, and, and that type of thing where people assume I'm from Mexico has happened multiple times. Now onto my fourth and final topic, how to deal with and combat racism. So personally, when I experienced racism, since I've been experiencing it ever since a little girl, I really learned how to cope with it and how to react when people are being racist towards me. And so now it kind of just rolls right off my shoulder and I don't even really think twice about it. But I know sometimes it can be really extreme and people can be really rude about it. And that is when you need to step in, or I think that's when I feel you need to step in and be like, okay, you can't say that like that is that's rude and it's racist and it's inappropriate but I will say that you cannot fight every battle it's really it takes a lot of out of you when you're constantly arguing with people so I wouldn't recommend to argue over every little thing because it's it's just not worth your time. But if you are in a situation where you can educate someone who is just being ignorant about what they're saying, then I definitely say take the time to educate them, not yell at them and not be hostile towards them, but to actually educate them what they're doing and how it's wrong and give them a way that they can say something properly or do something different about it. And now speaking on a bigger way, um, ways to combat racism, especially like in the workplace, Companies, big corporations and companies need to look at their stats, their demographics, and make sure that they have equal amounts of everything, of every minority group working there and that they're not isolating any of those groups and they're not prohibiting any of those minority groups to move up in the ladder in their company. And on a bigger level, we need to make more policies that don't discriminate against racial or ethnic groups. And now this can't happen overnight and I know this has been going on for a long time, but as long as we continue to advocate for one another and continue to act as one and stand up for each other, then we can make a change and it will eventually happen. It's a slow process, but we will eventually get there. We just have to stick together. And always, always be kind to one another, respect each other, and respect other people's views and respect people's race and their ethnicity. So that is all for today's video. Don't forget to comment down below on what type of content you all would like to see. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my subscribers. I appreciate every single one of you and the support you give me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you get notified every time I post a video. I can't wait for next week's video, so I will see you next time. Bye!